About uh, 25 years ago, just after I was ordained, uh, a movie came out called uh, The Field of Dreams. And it was very popular because it had great imagery that sort of evoked within us uh, a sense that there was a truth and a reality beyond the human. And this voice was heard by a farmer in Iowa. If you build it, he will come. And this haunted him to the point that he went ahead and plowed down five acres to build a baseball field of dreams. But as he's looking at this field and contemplating, we see this, this rush of wind go through the corn. And then all of a sudden, these ancient figures of a baseball team come out. We come to realize that one of those players was his father and that there was this great desire in his own heart to be at one with his father. In some ways, the voice, if you build it, I will come, has often been used to sort of describe the church. But we can also reverse it and say, if we come, he will build it. In some ways, when a candidate presents himself, he comes. A very simple gesture, but very profound, very symbolic. He simply answers to the invitation, I am here, I am present, I have come. And I am requesting or asking of the church the gift of ministry. And we know that ministry helps to build up the community of Christ. The ministry of diaconate, the ministry of priesthood, and the episcopacy. But there is also the building up of the church through the gift of the laity the holding fast to the Paschal mystery, the gift of belief that through that belief, the power of the Spirit and the grace of God begins to work in our lives. We begin to see a field of dreams. We begin to see possibilities that are beyond our human imagining. And what struck me is that the, the Society of the Scarborough Foreign Missions have basically been building a field of dreams going to countries, to communities, to raising up within the people there this gift of faith, and through their ministry, they have allowed that grace of God to build communities and churches. But sometimes it's the reverse. We have to come, we have to believe, we have to hold fast to the Paschal mystery in order to allow God's grace and the Spirit to be at work in the church. When I think about the ordination rite, a man presents himself, he comes, and in trust and in self-offering, he allows God through the grace and the outpouring of the Spirit in this ministry, this sacrament, to build. Sean will present himself as he has but the ordination rite gives us in sign and word how God builds and performs this work of ministry. The self-offering is seen in the gift of the celibacy that he will give to the church. Sometimes we see in this commitment a renunciation, but truly it is a positive commitment to a way of loving and of serving 
that will allow God's grace to build in the lives of other people. And that is the self-offering of love. It is a sacrificial act that he will make in a promise of celibacy before you and I to allow God's grace to build up the church. He will also kneel and make a promise of obedience, a willingness to allow his freedom to be shaped by the church and his superiors so that the church, the ministry of the Scarborough Foreign Mission, will be extended through his commitment of obedience, a freeing of his will to allow the will of God and the will of this community to shape that. In his commitment and promises, let us pray for Sean, that God's grace will strengthen his words, his commitments that he makes before us today. The ultimate sign of our willingness to come before the Lord is to kneel, and the prostration of this candidate and allowing the gift and the presence of God's church through the saints that he has built up throughout the centuries, how many men and women have held fast to the Paschal mystery. They will surround us as we pray through them for the intercession of this man. And the ancient sign of the laying on of hands, a simple but profound gesture that is done in silence so that we know that the mystery of God is at work. No human words can give us truly the fullness of God's sign. And so it is in that silence and the laying on of hands that he receives the spirit and the ordination of diaconate through the consecration of the words. Sean, the gift of ministry is a future reality that you will hold in your hands today. But God will take that promise will allow the gift of your ministry to build up the church. This is what we are privileged to witness today, the future and the gift of ministry continuing in the church through your self-giving and offering. You have come, and the Lord will build on your commitment and your willingness to serve him. My son, you are being raised to the order of deacons. The Lord has set an example for you to follow. As deacon, you will serve Jesus Christ, who was known among his disciples as the one who served others. Do the will of God generously. Serve God and mankind in love and joy. Never turn away from the hope which the gospel offers. You must not only listen to God's word, but also preach it. Hold the mystery of faith with a clear conscience. Express in action what you proclaim by your word of mouth. Finally, on the last day, when you go to meet the Lord, you will hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. My son, before you are ordained deacon, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Are you willing to be ordained for the church's ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I am. Are you resolved to discharge the office of deacon with humility and love in order to assist the bishop and the priests and to serve the people of Christ? I am. Are you resolved to hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience as the Apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and action as it is taught by the Gospel and the Church's tradition? I am. Are you resolved to maintain a, and deepen a spirit of prayer appropriate to your way of life and in keeping with what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the Liturgy of the Hours for the Church and for the whole world? I am. Are you resolved to shape your way of life always according to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you will give to the people. I am. Do you promise respect and obedience to your religious superiors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
my dear people, let us now stand and pray that the all-powerful Father will pour out his blessing on his servant whom he receives into the holy order of deacons. Bless this chosen man, Lord, hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man and make him holy, Lord, hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man, make him holy and consecrate him for his sacred duties, Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our petitions and give your help to this act of our ministry. We judge this man worthy to serve as a deacon, and we ask you to bless him and make him holy. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, be present with us by your power. You are the source of all honor, and you assign to each his rank, and you give to each his ministry. Lord, look with favor on this servant of yours, whom we now dedicate to the office of deacon to minister at your holy altar. Lord, send forth upon him the Holy Spirit, that he may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace to carry out faithfully the work of the ministry. May he excel in every virtue, in love that is sincere, in concern for the sick and the poor, in unassuming authority, in self-discipline, and in holiness of life. May his conduct exemplify your commandments and lead your people to imitate his purity of life. May he remain strong and steadfast in Christ, giving to the world the witness of a pure conscience. May he in his life imitate your Son, who came not to be served, but to serve, and one day reign with him in heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You have given all to me, now I return Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you preach, and practice what you teach. <laughs> 